A lot of people have asked me what stick I use, so I'm going to show you piece by piece. This is an Omni Arcade stick provided to me years ago by Itoki, and if you take out the electronics, it's just two large pieces of metal and a transparent plate that's made of bullet-resistant acrylic, the same material used in the windshields of planes. Because it's metal, it has some weight to it, which prevents the stick from moving around so much when you do this. The Itoki has a large hole cut out on the top metal piece to accommodate Korean-style levers with collars, but users of the more common Japanese levers can just get the plate with the smaller hole. This is nice for lever enthusiasts because you don't have to drill a bigger hole in your stick to fit certain levers like this golden lever gifted to me by Wazwaz. This one is sitting in the white gold edition Omni my wife got for me as a wedding gift. It almost looks too nice to play on. Can you imagine desperately mashing Wake Up Super on something like this? The lever I use on my main stick is a stock Taeyong Fanta lever, which is apparently the same one used in the Fantasia arcade decades ago, the place where Korean Tekken legends were born. The original manufacturer Taeyong stopped making this lever because other companies filled the market with cheaper clones. But not long ago, Itoki acquired the original mold of the Taeyong Fanta to manufacture it again, and now it comes stock. Apparently, the original mold was just sitting in a warehouse unused and forgotten. Korean levers kind of have a cult following, and if you're interested, Alex Nostalgix has insane quality videos on this topic. Now that I installed the lever, I can screw in the acrylic plate. Under it is my Jury Inception stick art, which was done by Richard Suono. I just got it printed out at Kinko's and cut out the holes, so now I can put in the buttons. The default Salma buttons were a bit sensitive for me, so I use gamer fingers which use Cherry MX switches, the ones found in eSportsy mechanical keyboards for their precision. The color of the switch determines how sensitive they are and how much sound they make. I'm weird because I use blues, the loudest and clickiest switches, but I guess I like tactile feedback more than I like my opponent not hearing my button presses. On the front of the stick, the Itogis originally come with yellow menu buttons as an homage to the start buttons on Sega Lindbergh cabinets, but I replaced them with silver because silver is shiny. And this button I got at Evo because it had a tattoo of one of my favorite games. I even have a sticker I got in Canada that shows the codes to select the original versions of the characters in this game, but to be honest, I still mash in the codes. Who said button mashing doesn't work? But of course, mashing won't do anything if your buttons and lever are not connected to a board. Inside the stick, I switched out the original board for one that works with many more consoles, the Brook Universal Fighting Board. This is the brain of the controller that connects to the lever, all the buttons, and the console. Thankfully, these days you don't need to solder the connectors anymore and risk burning yourself. The cable that goes from the board to the console has a full-size USB connector on one end and a doghouse shape on the other but I replaced the original with a braided cable to add a bit of durability and uniqueness. What's nice about this stick is that you can easily change out the board when a new generation of consoles come out so the rest of the product doesn't go obsolete. Last, and probably least, I bought a $1 mouse pad, cut it in half, and taped the pieces to the bottom of the stick. It's a little thing to improve grip when I'm playing on my lap, and it took me five minutes. Now I just screw on the bottom piece, and that's it. This is how I made my stick, and this is what makes up a stick. This was Gerald from Corey Gaming. Thanks for watching. This video was sponsored by ExpressVPN. The VPN allows me to set my internet connection to wherever I need in order to access content in other regions like Parasite on Hulu, a film I want to make a video essay about but don't have the time. Perhaps one day. It also keeps your connection secure from third parties who want to track your activity and share it with others, and apparently by hiding your IP, you can even prevent DDoS attacks from salty hackers. There are a bunch of VPNs out there, but this is the one I've used for two years without any issues and before I was approached to do this ad. If you want to try it out, go to expressvpn.com slash coreygaming to get three extra months free with a 12 month plan or just click on the link in the description. Thanks for your support and see you next video or stream.